24 days, folks. We only have a little more than three weeks until the midterm elections. And it's been a busy week in these four key states. Georgia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Wisconsin are going to play a major role in determining which party controls the Senate and all the other power that comes with it. Democrats are hoping Barack Obama, the former president, will give some candidates a boost. Former President Obama will join the campaign trail to stump for Democratic candidates later this month. He's going to be making trips to Georgia, Wisconsin, and Michigan in what his aides call a quote-unquote kickoff for his midterm travel. And it has been a crazy few days of debates in Georgia, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Take a listen to this. One thing I have not done, I've never pretended to be a police officer. <laughs> And, and, and I've, never, I've never threatened a shootout with the police. I am with, with many police officers, <laughs> and at the same time... Mr. Pastor, Walker, Mr. Yes. Walker, you are very well yes. aware of the rules tonight. Yes. And you have a prop. Yes. That is not allowed, sir. Yes. I ask you to put that prop away. Well, it's not a prop. It, it, this it, is real. I have been a pain in the rear end to Nancy Pelosi. And if Chuck Schumer is the leader, of the time. I will be a pain in the rear end to him, too. I'm for Ohio. I don't kiss anyone's ass like him. Ohio needs an ass kicker, not an ass kisser. In response to the wild charge of uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes, the FBI set me up with a corrupt, with a corrupt briefing and then leaked that to smear me. I am... No, I mean, right, let's, I'm sorry. Let's I'm sorry. Talk about, I, I mean, all right. He is referring to corruption with the FBI, which I've been trying to uncover and expose. All right. Let's bring in my political panel to break it all down. Amisha Cross is a Democratic strategist and political commentator. Doug High is a Republican strategist and a former communications director for the Republican National Committee. And Tia Mitchell is here. She is a Washington correspondent for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Given that, Ms. Tia, we're going to start in Georgia. Okay, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock, uh, he debated the Republican who would like to take his seat, Herschel Walker. I want to play a little bit more for you all specifically from that debate. Take a listen to this. Would you support President Biden running for a second term in 2024? I've not spent a minute thinking about what politicians should run for what in 2024. Is that a yes or a no? I, I, the answer is I have not. Mr. Walker, former President Trump is also considering a run for the White House in 2024. If you can give me a simple yes or no answer, and well, we'll give you time to explain as well, would you support a Trump 2024 run? Yes, I would. And let me tell you, President Trump is my friend. Has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with that. He's my friend. I won't uh, leave my allies, which is what Senator Warnock and Joe Biden did in Afghanistan. Tia, I think a lot of reporters are actually missing um, how last night's debate is actually playing in Georgia. I think your paper got it right, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Talk a bit about how Herschel Walker may have helped himself in his performance on the debate stage last night. Yes, and I know a lot of, you know, people who are supporting Senator Warnock don't like hearing that. But the truth of the matter is that Herschel Walker, I think, did what needed to be done, so to speak. Like, the bar was really low. And I think there are Republicans, there are conservatives, even some moderates that were looking for a reason to stay with Herschel Walker, because in the past few days, there have been reasons to abandon him, a lot of controversy, some misstatements, mistruths, meandering statements. But they want to support him because they want Republicans to control Congress. Yeah. And I think so. His performance last night, it wasn't, you know, I'm not saying he's the greatest debater ever, but he, he exceeded some of those low expectations. And in that way, I think there are some people who say, OK, now I can now I can cast my vote and know that he can at least hold his own should he go to Congress. Yeah, there are actually there was reports of a lot of split ticket voters in Georgia, folks who were willing to vote for Kemp, but weren't so sure about Herschel Walker. And the bar was definitely low um, for Mr. Walker last night. Doug, look, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you've prepped a lot of people for debate prep. When you debate somebody like a Herschel Walker, kind of in the style of Donald Trump, you have to be direct. You need to be pithy. You need to land your jabs. You have to answer the questions. Last night, and I love Reverend Warnock. You know, I know him personally. You know, he didn't always do mm -hmm. that. How do you think that's playing with the voters in Georgia? Uh, I think they're confused mm -hmm. uh, because what we see so often in Washington campaigns is, is expectation setting. Bar is low, bar is high. Your opponent's bar is high, your opponent's low. A lot of that is really kind of 
just political machinations. In Georgia, it was very real. Republicans will privately tell you, gosh, Warnock is, is strong on the stump. He's a, he's a preacher. Yeah, and Herschel, it didn't come off in the debate, though. And they'll tell you privately about Herschel Walker. Hey, not so good. And last night said that actually it's a bit muddier than that. And that scores points for Herschel Walker in a way that a lot of Republicans last night didn't expect. It, it, was, it, was, it was concerning. I think we have to wait and see how this is really going to play out. But this is the one debate between Herschel Walker and Reverend Warnock uh, 24 days ago to elect. Day. I want to talk about Wisconsin because uh, Mandela Barnes, the current lieutenant governor and the current senator from Minnesota, uh, Ron Johnson, they faced off in a debate as well this week. And it got very hot and testy, OK, <laughs> during pieces. I want to play for you this piece from the debate. The moderator asked each candidate to say what they admired about the other candidate. And this is what Ron Johnson said. I do think, you know, the senator has proven to be a family man. And I think that's that's admirable. Um, you know, that's absolutely to be respected. He, he speaks about his family. He's uh, done a lot to provide for them. I absolutely respect that. Mr. Johnson. I mean, likewise, I appreciate the fact that uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes had loving parents, a school teacher, father worked third shift. So he had, you know, good upbringing. I guess what puzzles me about that is, with that upbringing, why is he turned against America? I mean, what, why, why does he find the right. founding of America awful? It's, it's Somehow, we, it puzzles we me. did not. I said Please we argue. said something admirable. We said something <laughs> admirable. Amisha, how do you think Lieutenant Governor Barnes did in that debate, and how do you think he's stacking up overall? Well, I think that the performance was strong. However, there were points where he could have done better. Um, I, I feel as though that debate in and of itself started at the bottom in terms of the jabs that were taken. It was very vitriolic throughout the debate. Um, there were attacks on criminal justice reform records. There were um, anti-notions against BLM, the things that we would expect when it comes to um, a lot of the Republican rhetoric. That he stuck with the page there. But I feel as though this is going to be a very interesting race, like most, in terms of turnout. Both sides had to appeal to their bases. And I feel as though Mandela came and he did his job. He appealed to his base. Could it have been stronger? Yes. I don't think that he was ready for some of the jabs that came his way. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that this was a lesson in, in, in how to debate more than anything else. And to, their, and to their credit, they have more than one debate. Mm -hmm. You know, I, they did have more than one debate. Um, but Mandela Barnes has to do a lot more than just appeal to base voters if he wants to win this race. There's another race in Wisconsin, the gubernatorial race. Hasn't gotten as much coverage like some other races across mm -hmm. the country. But this is a consequential race. Mm -hmm. Governor Evers has vetoed literally everything the Republican state legislature has sent his way. And if Tim Michaels, the Republican candidate for governor, wins, uh, I think Wisconsin's going to be a little, there's some consequences here. Are there not, Doug? Yeah, look, you could see this going, going in the direction of Florida. And it's been interesting. You know, we've sp spent so much time over these past few months focusing on what I'd call the cartoon characters in the race, mm -hmm. right? The tatted up giant in the hoodie versus the TV doctor, the running back versus the rock and rev. So we, we ignore the North Carolina Senate race because we have two normal people running. We ignore the Wisconsin uh, gubernatorial race because we have normal Normal, relatively normal people running. And these races deserve a lot more attention. And voters within their states and obviously nationally need to know a lot more. They need to know a lot more. I know we have to go, but Tia, yeah, real quick, uh, Kip going to win the governor's race? He challenges Stacey Abrams? I do think right now Stacey Abrams has a lot of ground to make up, and there's not a lot of time. Early voting starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. All right, starts on Monday. Amisha, is Obama going to help folks uh, out there on the campaign trail? Yay or Obama's no? definitely going to help folks. He is the highest rated Democrat. I, I don't see how that could not bring out the base, bring out and excite people, especially younger voters. Early voting is starting in places all over the country, folks. We'll be watching. All right, Amisha Cross, Doug Hyde, Tia Mitchell. Thank you all for coming into the studio and giving your insights. Appreciate you all.